Hello everyone. Today I'm going to talk to you about some mistakes I've made. I, um, this, so this is in response to a question I received from Elias Jacob. He wrote, is there a chance you could make a video about the mistakes you made when you were, when you just started working, like maybe not researching if a company has a good reputation or things like that. Now I've mentioned stuff like this in passing in the past, but I kind of d wanted to uh, do a video about some of the mistakes I've made so that you can avoid them. And uh, so actually I'm glad you asked this question because it gave me that push to make this, uh, this video. So let's get right into it. I have made mistakes, obviously. It's kind of a rite of passage when you're starting off in freelance, pretty much anything I imagine, definitely freelance translation, you're going to make some mistakes. And uh, so the best thing I feel is to learn them early and uh, learn them quickly so that you don't make too many mistakes in the future. I'll go through, through some of the issues I've had uh, first, and then I'll talk about some of the ways I try to avoid these issues uh, in my day-to-day -day transactions and from the lessons I've learned. So first of all, yeah, I've had quite a few issues. I can run through a couple of them quickly. Uh, one of them was with freelancer.com. I, uh, there was a client content and this was very much towards the beginning. A client contacted me for a quick job on freelancer.com and, uh, and I did it. It was a translation of an audio transcription thing. Anyway, I performed the translation, asked for the payment, never heard back, asked for the payment, never heard back, asked for the payment, never heard back. Finally, I asked freelancer.com, which was hosting the whole thing about them. And they're like, well, you know, we don't know anything about them except their email address. I, I had understood that in order to post a job there, you had to actually give some pertinent information about you or your business, but apparently you don't. So that's where that went. And I, it wasn't too much money. So, but still that feeling of being cheated really kind of bothered me because this was the first time. And so, yeah, it really bothered me. But at the end of the day, it wasn't too much money. So here's another one that happened later was uh, I had another client. So this is a client that I had in, uh, I got, I think through pros.com and it was me and another translator working on the same document. And uh, we finished up the document and, and in fact, we had to rush quite a bit to do it, but we did it, we sent it and she sent it to the end client and then we tried to get paid and we didn't get paid. Her excuse, she had many different excuses. Some, for some of them, she's like, in fact, for a couple, she responded saying, oh, this isn't her, this is her mom, she's in the hospital right now. Of course, she'd forgotten that she added me on Facebook and I saw, then she posted later that same day on Facebook, having a party this weekend at my place, who's coming? I mean, it was ridiculous. Anyway, all these excuses and basically she was saying, the clients didn't pay me, so I can't pay you. Uh, by the way, you will probably hear something along these lines in the future. Do not accept this as an excuse, okay? Your, your contract is with whoever hired you, not with some end client or something. They take on the risk. This is why they're the middle person and they're getting paid for that, for taking on that risk. Anyway, so what happened here was uh, you, you know, I tried to get paid and finally after a while I was like, well, I'm going to contact this end client and try to get paid because in the meantime, I'd found out that the translation we had made was being used on their website, the final translation. And I've talked about this in my book and my course more in detail, but yeah, it was completely ridiculous. So now, so what happened, long story short, what happened is I never got paid. I still send out the emails periodically to the person who hired me, who, by the way, I gave a bad review on uh, pros.com and she's been banned from ever posting jobs on pros.com again. Uh, so, and the name of the company was Intertrado, Intertrado, whatever. So yeah, I have no problem bad mouthing them. And, uh, but I also contact the end client, which was this company Entrematic or DTEC, which is part of Entrematic. And, uh, and I have a set, to email them once a week with all the details, asking them about payment. It's been about three, four years now and that, I, that I'm sending that email out. I'm sure they've blocked me. And so like once a year, I'll, I'll switch the email that I send it from <laughs> just to keep it fresh. But basically, I don't think I'm seeing that money again. It was around 600 euros and that really annoyed me. And that's why I really want to be persistent about this. I'm like, if they're not paying me, I'm going to do everything I can to try to get paid. And uh, so yeah, that's what I've been doing. And, but unfortunately I haven't been paid yet. 
Um, and uh, so, and then another story that I have, and this one I also put in a lot more detail in uh, in my book. I think in the course as well, definitely in the book. Um, and I, I can, what I can do is show you some of the screenshots because what happened was this was in translatorsbase.com and translatorsbase. Uh, so I basically found the job. They needed a translation done. I said, okay, I'll do it. I did it. And then, and in fact, I checked the guy. So he had a name, he had an email address and he had an address, you know, that I could look up on Google maps. And it, so it seemed, you know, totally legit. I mean, legit enough at the time, let's say did the translation sent. And I even told him, I was like, look, I'm going to password protect this, this translation because I've been burned in the past. And if you send me partial payment, he owed me like 250 bucks, I think. I was like, look, if you send me a part, I'll send this to you password protected. You send me a partial payment of 50 or 100 bucks or something like that. Um, and then I'll give you the password to open it. That was the last I heard from him. Now, since then, I've looked it up. It's actually very easy to access a password protected document on Word. So that's probably what he did. But in the meantime, I never got paid. I contacted him through translators base and through the email address he gave me. Uh, tried the phone number didn't work and obviously i contacted translators base itself and told them and they wrote back and they're like oh he's not replying to our emails well uh, he, he can't post here ever again he posted from a yahoo email address once again i thought translators base took a bit more information before allowing people to post i guess they don't so uh and th that's pretty much it I, I i can show what i'll do actually is i'll take some of the screenshots from this last one uh and uh and post them up while I'm speaking about it, just to show you kind of uh, what was going on and some of the um, the back and forth that was there, because it was it was something I've closed up since then. I thought, I, oh yeah, no, I have, uh, yeah, um, because it, it can show you exactly that, that he had a phone number, he had an address, and I'll show you what it is because obviously it's all bogus. In fact, later I looked it up on Google Maps and it was, I think, just some house. But, uh, and I can show you all the correspondence, in fact, that we sent back and forth. Um, so you can kind of get an idea of what happened and also my email to uh, translators based in their response, just so you get an idea. And uh, so anyway, these are some of the mistakes that I've made in the past. Uh, I want to mention another one quickly, uh, briefly, a mistake that I made was with a client in uh, Italy who um, who I hired and, or sorry, who hired me, I did the translation. I wasn't hearing back, wasn't getting paid, but I did find a phone number. She hadn't supplied the phone number, but I found a phone number. And so what I did was I had someone, I think it might've even been my mother. I, I can't remember, it might've been my mother. I, no, I wanna say it was someone, it was a friend of mine who lived close by. Anyway, I had someone call this lady and basically, I'd emailed and said, uh, oh, I'm going to have someone pass by in person to pick it up if you don't you know, send me my payment. And she obviously thought I was bluffing. So I had someone call this lady and say, oh, I'm passing by so-and-so because I knew where the address was. It was somewhere in Italy. I wasn't in Italy at the time, but I had someone call from an Italian number and say, I'm going to pass by so-and-so. Can you have Rob Robert's uh, money ready And uh, because I'm going to go pick it up? And that put the lady, I guess, in kind of panic mode. And so she did pay me And uh, at, at the end of the day. So yeah, sometimes you need to do stuff like this. And uh, you know, you live and you learn. So, but there are some things that I do now every time I get a new client, just to be sure. So actually I'm going to divide this video into two. And uh, so in the next video, I'm gonna talk about the things that I do when I get a new client in order to make sure that stuff like this doesn't happen, or at least to really limit my downside. But hopefully you found this video useful, just seeing a bunch of the issues that I've had to deal with in the past. And uh, hopefully it'll stop you from having the same problems. And, but yeah, stay tuned for part two of this video where I talk about what I do to avoid them uh, when I find new clients or apply for new jobs, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but yeah, that's about it for now. I will see you in the next video. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't. Click like if you find this video useful because that always helps. Otherwise, see you next time. Thanks. Bye.